this is a pre presentation on a, uh, with respect to data, particularly health, health, other very, very sensitive forms, um, the constructive uh, trust, but, uh, but specifically for data that since talking about. Um, next slide, please. So a constructive trust is a legal, legal fiction. It is like this. So say it was five grand from Lorenzo and uh, he goes and a uh, truck with that. If they go to court, um, the court can that uh, Ahmad is no longer the owner of that uh, ill-gotten truck. Tr he used Lorenzo's five grand to purchase that truck. So really, Ahmad is not the owner for Lorenzo. Uh, it's a legal fiction, right? So they don't actually put the truck uh, trust, but the trust, I mean, but the truck can in and to put Lorenzo back into the standing he would have been, but for Ahmad have, having stolen. It's about it's a it's a remedy for unjust enrichment, also for, uh, things like uh, breach of fiduciary duty. So those duties that fiduciary relationship have with each other, those are breached. Then a court. It is whether it's property, both tangible or intangible, it will issue a transfer ownership of that thing. The question is, can you use um, next slide? So the kind of data I'm, I'm talk talking about. So TikTok scraping data, um, one of those really important ones dealing with health. And uh, biometrics is face and facial recognition. Um, a couple of other, if you want to click the uh, like return, a couple of other examples uh, like um, pregnancy related data or ways that advertisers, of course, we, we know the, the target example of finding out about people's uh, reproductive health and pregnancy. And the next one I have, if we click that, is you know, online therapy. And we've seen the crisis text line and those kinds of data. And this is not all the kinds of health or health related, mental health related data that's being collected. Of course, um, there's other biometric or, or bio identifying um, uh, data being collected as well. I'm really interested in sound data, not just your voice, but all the sounds that we make that can be used to identify us, including um, of course, over these past three years, cough data being used as diagnoses, but also being collected and saved. So what is the remedy for this kind of data collection? You can click like twice, I think, um, just to move ahead. It really just depends. Um, Illinois BIPA, uh, the Biometric Privacy Act, has been one of the strongest state laws uh, related to protecting biometric and, and bio, lot, like bio data um, privacy for people. But even that, even BIPA is limited, but it is the one that gives a private right of action, meaning a private person at, or and or a class can sue for some kind of relief based on a company's collection, use, and storage of data. But basically, BIPA says you can't collect, store, or use data without... Um, properly notifying the person and getting written consent um, about their data, about the use of, and collection of their data, and um, no selling or otherwise profiting from data. And these are just like three examples of settlements and judgments that have come down um, related to the big player. So, Snap, Facebook, Google, uh, in connection to um, BIPA, the BIPA cases. The next slide, though, is like the major question, and that is, but people get money back, or a class may get a monetary settlement, but what about the data that's already been collected and is being used for um, various purposes? So next. I know you've heard about data trusts and these are like a, a tool for stewardship 
of data. They've been, you know, very popular for a while now as, as possible ways of governing data collected and data to be used for specific purposes. So why not the data that has been unlawfully, um, deceptively sometimes collected in the social structures or otherwise in cases like the BIPA cases? Because the organizations have them, they don't just disappear when there's a settlement and uh, money is paid out to communities or the state AGs. But the questions to resolve related to constructive data trust are a couple. On the next slide, questions to resolve include, you know, unjust enrichment. How are we gonna define that properly to get um, state AGs as well as the uh, federal uh, government, so the FTC, for example, to go about um, prosecuting uh, organizations in connection with ways that they have collected data, particularly the health and biometric data. Um, and then also there's this really big problem and that is this adequate remedy problem. And the adequate remedy problem says in general that a court won't create a constructive trust if there is an adequate remedy available. And an adequate remedy provides complete relief. The question is, is money from like a class action or the $5,000 or $1,000, depending on what state that, um, uh, in including BIPA, like for the private right of action, is that enough? Is that a complete remedy to having your health or biometric data taken? The question is, well, the data itself held by an organization is still profitable. Um, I'm not sure that's a complete remedy. And so maybe a constructive trust might be a possibility. But then, next slide, we have to come up with some really important um, structures for governing a data, a data trust. So a constructive trust is made and then what happens? Well, this is a po opportunity for cooperative community government governance, uh, governance of data that has been removed, so to speak, and a, a possibility for communities or organizations set up as trustees for communities to use that data, that health data, uh, that biometric data for advancement of the community, whether that's um, advancements in health, or other things, but they would use community data, use principles and models coming up or emerging from that community as a possibility. There's also a possibility for data abolition. We know that the federal uh, government, the FTC has said that disgorgement is on the, on the menu for algorithms and the data and models associated with those algorithms. So it's not out of the uh, poss realm of possibility to have a constructive trust, it's just setting out the structures, the boundaries, and seeing if a court will actually say, oh, this is a, a possible remedy for a data-based uh, harm. And um, that money is just not enough when it comes to health and biometric data. Thank you.